preparing. Okay, good morning here. Good evening, Philippines, and good afternoon, Middle East. So welcome again to our every Wednesday live session with 9.09ers. So I would like to say thank you to Sir Irvin. And for our speaker today is Sir Lone. Um, before anything else, I would like to say happy birthday to none other than Sir Lone. Sir Lone, happy birthday. Wow, thank you. All right. Yeah. It was actually uh, on April 17. But yeah, thank you so much for the greeting. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. Okay. How was your birthday? Um, it was actually quite nice. Um, I was able to serve at our church for the entire day. And I actually envisioned myself doing that, uh, giving my my birthday to the Lord. Because there's no better way to celebrate the gift of life than giving glory to the giver. So yeah, it was cool. It was awesome. Yeah. So yeah, everyone is typing um, uh, their greetings. Happy birthday, sir. So please greet Sir Lo. <laughs> happy, happy thank birthday. You, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, but before anything else, also I would like to hi uh, to say hi to Marvin, Gladys, Michelle, and Manuel to my co-admins. And without further ado, okay, let's welcome back Sir Lo. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Sir Jeff, for that uh, birthday greeting to all the viewers right now who also greeted me. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. I've never received this many greetings in my entire life. <laughs> so yeah, very grateful. So welcome to our live lecture once again here on IELTS Filipino Nurses Group. I am very honored to be given another chance to be a guest speaker here and share my experience and knowledge of the IELTS with all our viewers right now. And we also want to thank IFNG for this opportunity because I know that this Facebook group is assisting a lot of Filipinos in their hopes of making their dreams of working and living abroad come true. So yeah, thank you so much IFNG for this wonderful undertaking. But before we proceed to the meat of the matter, before we start talking about the common mistakes in speaking, and I know everybody's excited to talk about it, like what am I doing wrong? <laughs> Is there something in particular that will prevent me from getting the score that I want? Before we talk about those things, we would like to share some useful information with all of you guys. So at 9.09er, we have a joint promo with the organizations that facilitate the IELTS exam in the Philippines, namely IDP and the British Council. So from April to June 2022, we are offering a free IELTS review to all test takers in the Philippines who will be taking their IELTS exam with IDP. So what are you going to get with this free IELTS review? You will have one round of free one-on-one -on -one coaching with Mr. Brian Shawson. So he is, in my opinion, and even I think our boss, Sir Irvin, will agree, he is our best lecturer and coach. Why? Because Sir Brian got a perfect score in all sections of the IELTS. And if you think about that, well, there's no other person that should be coaching you aside from this guy. But, you know, if he's not available, you have people like me and the other senior coaches of 9.09er. But if we're talking about the best coach available, Definitely, without a doubt, Mr. Brian Shoson is the guy for the job. Perfect scores in all sections of the IELTS. Apart from a coaching session with Brian, you will receive a free 22-hour IELTS online course with this free IELTS review. On top of that, you will get free uh, mock exams, a free interactive masterclass webinar on all the four sections of the IELTS. You will get free IELTS expert support, a free IELTS pretest, a free writing enhanced assessment, a flash sale if you indicate 9.09er as your referral agent and soft copy of materials. So anyone is eligible for this promo except the following. Number one, overseas residents. Even if you're a Filipino but you're living abroad, I'm afraid you are not qualified for this promo. Another group that is disqualified from this promo are PH residents who have not registered for the IELTS exam. Also disqualified are PH residents who are taking the IELTS exam with IDP Philippines after June 30, and PH residents who apply for the IELTS exam on their own without indicating 9.09er as their referral agent. I would also like to add on that list, people who will be taking the test under the British Council. We have a different promo with the British Council, but if you want the IDP package, then I'm afraid you're not eligible for it if you filed for an exam under the British Council. So if you want to avail all these goodies, feel free to save a copy of the QR code that you see on the screen. And of course, you can also use the link provided on the screen to register for an IELTS exam under IDP Philippines. 
But if you want to take the test with the British Council, don't fret. You're also going to get freebies from them. We also have a joint promo with them, also running from April to June 2022. So this free IELTS review brought to you by 9.09er and the British Council entitles you to, once again, a free coaching session with Sir Brian, a free 22-hour IELTS online course, free mock exams, a free webinar with Ms. Rosella Torrecampo, one of our favorite IELTS examiners in the Philippines. She has been around the industry for a long time, and she is definitely, in my opinion, at least one of the best IELTS examiners of all time. There's also free online materials and free orientation for the IELTS computer-delivered version via this promo. So who is eligible for this review? Almost everybody except the following. Again, overseas residents, Filipino residents or PH residents who have not registered for the IELTS exam with the British Council. So that means if you registered under the IDP or under IDP, that means you cannot, of course, get the review package from the British Council. Also disqualified are PH residents who are taking the IELTS exam with the British Council after June 30 and PH residents who apply for the IELTS exam on their own without using the Niner British Council registration link. If you want to get the review package brought to you by British Council and Niner, please use the link that you see on the screen or save a copy of the QR code. Also, we would like to inform everyone that we have books available via Shopee. Uh, this is easily accessible to everyone in the Philippines. If you are not in the Philippines, what you can do is have someone here buy the books for you and then just ship it to your location. So we have a book called the IELTS Band 7 Plus Speaking Guide. This contains a lot of model answers for questions in the IELTS speaking section. And these model answers are guaranteed to get you seven or higher. Now, of course, we don't encourage anyone from memorizing answers because in reality, there's no telling what kind of question you will get in the actual exam. But the purpose of this book is to help you get ideas on what you can bring up and how to structure your answers. So tons of sample answers from this book. For those who still don't know what test they will take, are they going to take the IELTS, the TOEFL, the PTE, the OET? We have the 8-in-1 book. It contains basic information about the benefits of taking each test so you can make a better decision on what exam you will apply for. And then our newly released book, Grammar Essentials, which helps you understand English grammar in a simplified manner. So you can get all of these books again via Shopee. Also, we will be releasing a TOEFL book soon. So if you know someone who will take the TOEFL, we recommend that you secure a copy of that book. And finally, I always tell people that my Christianity is a very integral part of my teaching methodology. And because of that, I'm encouraging you to join me uh, on the Alpha course. So whether you're a new Christian or not, at Alpha, we will answer life's toughest questions. And we can find out the answers to these questions together. You can join us online every Tuesday at 8 p.m. via Zoom. So the course will run from April to July. If it's a holiday, definitely we're not going to run the course. And you can register via bit.ly slash NLNM. Reg. So that stands for New Life North Metro, our church. I would love to see all of you there if you're available. Again, this is 8 p.m. Philippine time so that we can talk about anything under the sun. All right. So with that out of the way, for those who are watching just now, for those who are tuning in just now, welcome to our lecture on common mistakes in speaking brought to you by our review center, 9.09er IELTS review and tutorial. For those who are just tuning in now, my name is Lon. I am one of the senior IELTS coaches and lecturers at Niner. I also happen to be the head of our TOEFL program. Today, we're going to discuss the things that people normally do when they're answering questions in the speaking section. And these things that they normally do often lead to low scores because they are problematic. They lead to demerits because they are considered mistakes. So before we talk about the common mistakes, let's review how are you being assessed in the IELTS speaking section? So when you give answers, you will be graded based on the following. We have fluency and cohesion, uh, lexical resource, we have grammar, or also known as grammatical range and accuracy, and then we have pronunciation. So when it comes to fluency and cohesion, this pertains to your ability to give a long answer without, uh, uh, without noticeable effort. And at the same time, you have to demonstrate the ability 
to accurately use cohesive devices and to present information in an organized manner. If you can do the things that I said, you can get a high score for fluency and cohesion. What about lexical resource? You want to show the examiner that you know a lot of English words, that you have awareness of collocation, and that you are accurately using English words. Then we have grammatical range and accuracy. You want to demonstrate the ability to follow the rules of English grammar plus construct different sentence structures. Finally, we have pronunciation, which is the application of the music of English. You don't want to be monotonous. You want to show the examiner that you can change your intonation patterns from time to time. You know when to increase the volume of your voice. You know when to bring it down. You know when to talk fast. You know when to slow down. And you know how to pronounce English vowel and consonant sounds correctly. The way it works is for each grading criteria, you will be scored based on a nine band scale. So this is perfect for those who don't know much about the IELTS speaking section. So you're being graded from one to nine for each grading criterion. After that, the examiner will get the average of your score from each criterion and the average will become your overall band score for speaking. If you get Six in fluency and cohesion, six in lexical resource, seven in grammar, seven in pronunciation. The examiner will add all of those four, divide them by four, and then you will be getting 6.5. That becomes your overall band score for speaking. Now, why am I discussing the four grading criteria? The way that I structured this lecture, we're going to discuss the common mistakes that people make with each grading criteria. All right? So here we go. So can anyone tell me uh, what does this person look like? <laughs> does this person look confident, ladies and gentlemen? Feel free to send your answers via chat. You can type it in. Do you think this person looks confident? Del says that this person looks anxious. Jill says, no, she doesn't look confident. Mr. Francisco Paz, welcome. He says that the lady in the picture looks depressed. What about the people on Facebook? Harleen says this person looks anxious. So we have a consensus there. Anxiousness. Mary Joy says nervous. Catherine says she's thinking. That's a very optimistic way of <laughs> looking at it. All right. So... What is the message that this picture conveys? Most of the time, people get low scores in fluency and cohesion because they are anxious. They are nervous. And when you're nervous, what ends up happening is you're committing a lot of unnecessary pauses. You're using a lot of fillers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the worst part is if you have a filler like Patrick Starr. You know Patrick Starr from SpongeBob SquarePants? The SpongeBob. <laughs> if that's your filler, that's going to be problematic. Duh. <laughs> Some people, they tend to stutter. They say the same things over and over again. You know, you know, they're hesitating too much. And part of the problem is nervousness or anxiousness. And I want to know, what makes you feel nervous during the IELTS speaking exam? Can you type your reason for being nervous in chat? Not even during the actual exam. So for those, for those who have not yet taken the test, if you are studying under a review center, I believe you are taking part in coaching sessions. Why are you nervous? Why are you anxious during one-on-one -on -one coaching for speaking? No, no shame, guys. No shame. We're not here to condemn people. We want to find out what are the common things that are bothering you. Unfamiliarity with the topic, according to Marisol, Slow speech, according to Francisco. Joyce has no idea about the topic. Ray says not prepared. All right. Now, on Facebook, Lord Wynn says, we don't know what to do. All right. That's a very valid point. Christy is doubting herself. Okay. So I like all your answers, guys. I can, correct me if I'm wrong, 
agree or disagree, okay? Say agree or disagree in chat. One of the reasons why you feel nervous is you're not comfortable speaking the language. Am I right? Especially for people who live in the Philippines, we have very few reasons to use English every single day. And because we're not comfortable, obviously when we are put in a position where we're required to speak English and our every move, our every word is being assessed, we tend to become nervous. Am I right? Do you feel that? I feel that too. But for different reasons. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Thank you, Sasha, Claudine, Emily. All right. Even the viewers on Facebook agree. Phoebe, Shay, Roma. Hello, Facebook viewers. Okay. So why are we not comfortable using the language? Because we don't use it. You see how it's a vicious cycle? You cannot speak English because you're too afraid. You're not comfortable. And you're not comfortable because you're not using it. You see, it's a vicious cycle that keeps going and going and going. How do we break the cycle? How do we break the cycle? Practice. We have to use the language. But sir, I'm afraid. I'm not good enough. I want to plant in your heart the idea that everybody starts at beginners, as beginners. When you're a beginner, don't expect yourself to be good at something right away. And I think a lot of people that take part in, let me just move my camera a bit. So a lot of people who undergo one-on-one -on -one coaching, at Niner at least, this is our experience at Niner, they're afraid of one-on-one -on -one coaching because they feel like when I attend one-on-one -on -one coaching, I should already be good. I should have already seen every video. I should already come to coaching prepared so that I will hear nothing but praises from my coaches. If your objective is to be praised, then you are not going about it the right way. Coaching is all about corrections. What can be corrected if you don't make mistakes? So what I need you guys to do, everyone watching right now, I need you to be comfortable with your mistakes. Embrace your imperfection. Can we type that in chat if we are in agreement with each other? Embrace imperfection. Because throughout this lecture, this is what I want you to understand. You need to embrace imperfection. Because the reality is, perfection is the enemy of productivity. If you have a perfectionist mindset, that will hold you back from trying. That will prevent you from even practicing. Embrace imperfection. It's such a, it's such a sad thing to think that in the Philippines, what holds us back is our fear of public opinion. We're afraid to use the language because we are too concerned about what other people will say about our communication skills. Especially in the Philippines where you will get bashed if you make a post and your grammar is bad. Have you ever seen that? I think the most recent example that I can cite is Alger Abrenica. You know, I, I don't want to unearth his mar marital issues. But I remember him releasing, I think, some kind of essay. And everybody was so quick to jump on that essay and to correct it. Now, as someone that teaches English, obviously, I should be correcting that. But I think the message that we send there is that we are living in a ruthless society that's quick to jump on people making mistakes. That's why I understand why you're afraid. But here's my question. Do you remember the Alger issue until I brought it up? I don't think you do. So how does that relate to what we're talking about? Do not be afraid of the opinion of others because you might be the hot topic today, but people will forget about you eventually. Don't be too concerned about the opinion of others. It brings me so much to, it brings me to that, to that line from Game of Thrones when Tywin Lannister said, the, the, the lion, the lion does not concern himself with the opinion of the sheep. You're a lion. You're a lion. Why are you concerned with the opinion of the sheep? Practice. Practice. How do you get better from the mistakes? Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Don't be afraid of what other people will say because the people that will say something about you will either not be part of your life for a long time 
or eventually they will be too busy with their own stuff that they will not even remember you. So why are you letting them live rent-free in your head? So you see, it's not just about speaking. It's about your mindset. Do not let the opinion of others scare you from practicing. I've seen this with other people. I don't want to take the IELTS. I've seen my, my coworker. My coworker is so good, but my coworker got a bad score in the IELTS. I'm not going to try anymore. The per that person's experience is different from yours. So I encourage you. I encourage you. Embrace your imperfection. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Learn from them. I think the only people who are afraid of making mistakes are people who believe that they cannot learn from them. Are you that type of person? Are you incapable of learning from your mistake? Because if so, then we're going to have a big problem. Because becoming better at the IELTS is all about learning from your mistakes. Keep that in mind. Nobody said that you shouldn't make them. You learn from them. Another thing I notice, people are too self-conscious with their errors. They're already saying something and they will try to correct it or take it back. Have you ever done this in a coaching session? Have you ever done this when you're talking to someone? You already said something and then you want to take it back. You want to correct it. Have you done that? Anybody? I remember when I was a child, I went to Pangasinan. Uh, no, 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 Paranaque. Uh, no, 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 Pampanga. Have you ever done that? Okay, at least Rochen is honest. Again, no, no, no condemnation here. We're here to learn. And I love this attitude of being able to face our mistakes so that we can fix the problem. So is Rochen alone here? Like, is she the only one that feels this way? <laughs> Kudos, Rochen. Kudos. So I need you to learn to bounce back. Because the problem with constantly correcting yourself, you are cutting your own, your own trail of thought. You're cutting your own trail of thought. What do I mean? Your brain is already fixated on that idea. Your brain wants to deliver that idea. But what you do is you backtrack and now your brain's path or your brain's flow is ruined because you focused on correcting yourself instead of focusing on what you want to talk about. Do not correct yourself too much. Because now you will be lost. You will not be able to keep track of what you want to discuss. If you make one or two mistakes in the IELTS speaking section, it's not the end of the world. What matters is you're able to recover from the mistake. You got one sentence wrong, so what? Bounce back. Create better sentences after that. Do not fixate on fixing the error. Because I tell you right now, your answers are recorded anyway. So if the examiner wants to review what you said, even if you correct yourself over and over again, that won't really matter much in the grand scheme of things. On top of that, I firmly believe that if you got it wrong the first time, there's a good chance that if you try to correct it again, you will just make more mistakes. If you really knew the correct word, if you really knew the grammatical rule, then you don't have to think about it anymore. Automatically, you will apply it. So minimize self-correction when you're taking your test or when you're undergoing one-on-one -on -one coaching. Okay? Minimize self correction. As long as you're practicing, as long as you're speaking, you will become more comfortable with using the language. At 9.09er, we offer speaking practice every 9 p.m. I encourage you to join that. Whether you're taking the IELTS, the TOEFL, the OET, or the PTE, speaking practice is very helpful because it helps you become more fluent with the language, allowing you to construct sentences without pausing in the middle of your sentences. Now, I keep saying middle, middle, middle. What's wrong with that? Here's an example of posing in the middle of your sentence. I really want to watch Thor um, for um, Love and Thunder, um, but, um, but um, that, that movie will not be shown now, may, maybe in the future. That kind of speech pattern will get you a low score for fluency and cohesion. That's not to say that you're not allowed to pause or stop. But when you stop, when you pause, do it when your sentence is already complete. And that's why the principle of chunking is very helpful when it comes to 
helping you get a high score for fluency and cohesion. What is chunking? Deliver ideas one sentence at a time. I cannot really talk about other nationalities, but in the Philippines, we have a problem when it comes to our brain and mouth connection. Filipinos tend to think really fast. I don't know if you noticed this. We tend to think really fast to the point that our brain is already ahead of our mouth. And the mouth, because it cannot keep up with the brain, ends up stuttering, ends up committing unnecessary pauses. You're already talking about a second reason, but your mouth is still talking about the first reason behind your idea. And that's why you're committing these mistakes. So learn to synchronize your mouth and your brain by chunking. Attack the question one sentence at a time. For example, tell me something about your hometown. I'm currently living in Quezon City, which is located in the national capital region of the Philippines. My hometown is considered as the city of stars because a lot of broadcasting networks is located here. In fact, it's very common for people like me to run into celebrities every now and then. Notice that I do not stop in the middle of my sentences. What I do, I deliver a short sentence, pause for a bit, deliver another short sentence, pause for a bit. That is what we mean by chunking. The problem with some test takers, they think that, oh, I need to deliver a very long answer right away. The danger of that is sometimes you will run out of words because you're trying to give a very long response immediately. Divide your answers in multiple sentences. A lot of short sentences will create the impression that you're giving a very long answer. I hope that helps. Another cause of stuttering, fillers, and unnecessary pauses, and I think a lot of you mentioned this earlier, is limited vocabulary, all right? How do you expand your vocabulary? So when you are practicing, when you are undergoing one-on-one -on -one coaching, record yourself. Why? When you record yourself, you will be able to hear the parts of your response where you committed unnecessary pauses. What good will that do? Well, if you identify the pauses, you will realize, hey, this is the word that I'm forgetting. So once you figure out the word that you're forgetting, now you're able to practice using it every single day. And when you use it every single day, it becomes part of your vocabulary. Haven't you noticed that when you speak English, there are certain words that you don't anymore think about. They just naturally come to you. And there are words that you really have to think about. The words that you don't think about, these are the words that are part of your vocabulary. You can easily remember them because you use them a lot. In order to master a word, in order to use it in your speaking test, you have to use a word every day so that it comes to you automatically. Right now, you're not able to talk fluently because your brain is still having a hard time recalling English words. And I bet a lot of people can relate to this. You already know the answer to the question, but sometimes, even though you know the answer to the question, you cannot seem to respond to it quickly because you you are still having a hard time trying to remember the English word for the ideas that you want to bring up. Am I right? So that's why we need to be really careful. We need to be really careful with our study of English words. Don't just read them. If you're just reading a word, all you're doing is becoming familiar with it. Learn to master it. Mastery can only be achieved through constant use of a word. Another thing that you can do is to observe English speakers. Try to pay attention to words that they normally use when they are conversing with one another. All right? Now, in relation, tell me if you can relate to this or not. Have you ever spoken in English and then out of your fear of repetition, you just stop? You just stop and try to think of a better word. Are you guilty? Don't be shy. Raise your hand. Or just say me in chat. Me in chat. Okay, Del. Del is honest. Good job. <laughs> Abby, Sasha, Claudine. Okay, Francisco, Zeke, Marisol. Let's see the, the people on, on Facebook. Do they have the, the same? All right. Same opinion with Mary Rose. Then, then we got Roma, Jacinto, Nilda. Elena Sadoy, Latifa. Wow, that's a very fancy name, Latifa. Okay, my question to you. Why are you afraid to repeat words? 
Hmm. Question, why are you afraid to repeat words? Why? <laughs> Redundancy? So let, let's clarify some terms here. Redundancy and repetition are two different things. Redundancy, you have two different words, but they have the same meaning. For example, Cheryl is beautiful and pretty. Beautiful and pretty, that's redundancy. Because you have two words that convey the same meaning. Repetition is using the same word over and over again. So are you afraid of repetition or afraid of redundancy? So Marisol says she's afraid of repetition. Yeah, that's a valid reason. You can be afraid of both. You want to show the examiner that you know a lot of English words. All right. There's really nothing wrong with having that kind of mentality that you know a lot of English words. But I want you to understand, guys, in the actual exam, when the pressure is already rising, when the going gets tough, if you don't know the better word, just repeat a word. Why? That's going to be the lesser evil. Trust me, that's going to be the lesser evil because there's no point in stressing yourself thinking of a better word because had you known the better word, you don't even need to stress about it. Have you ever noticed you tried to replace a word and after all your attempts, you ended up repeating it anyway? To the people who are afraid of repetition and redundancy, aren't you guilty of that? You tried to replace a word only to just repeat it. Worse, you tried to replace it and you ended up using the wrong word. Can you relate to that? It's like the Linkin Park song. I tried so hard and got so far. <laughs> In the end, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> you tried so hard to replace it. In the end, it did not matter, right? It did not matter. Never sacrifice clarity for better words. Because the reality is, again, I will say this again, I cannot stress this enough. If you don't know the better word, there's no point in stressing yourself out. The better word would automatically come out had you known it. Okay? Now, I'm not discouraging you from expanding your vocabulary. That's why I'm asking you when you're practicing, record yourself so that you can hear the words that you're forgetting. You can hear the words that you're repeating. And now you can you can determine what are the words that you need to learn. If you like using the word beautiful all the time, then it's time for you to look for synonyms of that. Am I right? But in the actual exam, never do that. The lesser evil is to repeat. Also, come to terms with the fact that there are words that you have to repeat. There are words that you have to repeat. For example, the word computer. How are you going to paraphrase the word computer? Anybody? How do you paraphrase the word computer? Right? How do you paraphrase the word sun? There are certain words that you cannot paraphrase. You need to determine and distinguish the words that you have to repeat. Otherwise, you're just stressing yourself out. You're giving yourself unwarranted stress. Now, once you figure this out, once your vocabulary is extensive, once you recognize words that you need to repeat, once you accept the fact that there's no such thing as a better word, because again, there's no point in stressing yourself out, then you will commit less fillers, you will stutter less, and you will commit less unnecessary pauses. All right? Another thing that you guys mentioned some of you are not able to speak fluently because you do not understand the question or you're not familiar with the topic. And this is true because it has often been said that you cannot give what you don't have. If you don't know the answer to the question, even if your communication skills are great, then you're not going to be able to give an effective response. All right? So how do we address this problem? Number one, you need to know what to expect. But how do we do that, sir? I thought that there's no way of telling what kind of questions we're going to get during our exam. 
knowing what to expect means taking a lot of practice tests, undergoing a lot of coaching sessions. Why? It will expose you to a wide range of themes. Themes that are used in the IELTS over and over again. You will not get the exact question from your practice tests during the actual IELTS speaking section. However, it will expose you to the ideas that are normally brought up in the IELTS. Education, environment, technology, you know, these kinds of things. If you know something about them, then it equips you with information that will allow you to effectively respond to any kind of question. You may not be able to talk about it in detail, but being able to talk about it for a bit is much better than not being able to talk about it at all. Another thing you can do is be honest. Be honest. So I remember Sir Irvin saying that there was a student who was asked a certain question, but I think I'm, this is going to be a bad example because I cannot remember the exact question. So let's just use me. So I used to have a student in the Philippines, but this person ended up taking the test in Vietnam. And this student was a volleyball player. But the kind of question that this person got was more on basketball. The person that we're talking about, my student, never played basketball in his entire life. So basketball is a very difficult topic for him. But what did he do? He was honest. So the examiner went something along the lines of, so can you tell me something? Why is it popular in the Philippines to play basketball? And then my student responded, if I'm being honest with you, I don't really know why people love basketball in the Philippines. We have a very strange relationship with it. We're very short, and yet we like to play this game that is built for really tall people. However, if you were to ask me about another team sport, which is volleyball, I think I have a better chance of talking about that in detail because I used to be a volleyball player for our school. In fact, I even won awards as our star player in our volleyball team. Now notice, that person did not really talk about basketball. This person was honest. But you see, redirection, redirection can be your weapon for questions that you don't really know. Say something that is slightly related to the question and try to direct it toward the topic that you are, you're more comfortable talking about. Again, the question was about basketball. But then my student established that both basketball and volleyball are team sports. And then he started going to the direction of volleyball, allowing him to talk a little bit more. Remember that at the end of the day, this is a speaking test, not an IQ test. So even if you cannot give amazing, mind-blowing, or impressive ideas, as long as your answer makes sense, and as long as you're demonstrating your ability to give good answers using English, you should be fine. So for people who are worried about not having a lot of ideas, I hope that that advice will help you. But if you're still struggling with generating ideas, at 9.09er, we have a content speaking course that is designed to help you quickly come up with answers during your IELTS speaking test. Another reason why people commit a lot of fillers, they're too conscious about the fillers. They don't want to commit it. Just keep in mind that it's okay to commit fillers as long as you don't overdo them. When you become too conscious with fillers, you're actually going to start committing them more. Another problem why people get a low score for fluency and cohesion is they are not able to connect words, phrases, and sentences to form an idea. In order to avoid this problem, you need to use linking words and discourse markers. So you can use the ones that you see on the screen. Definitely in English, there's more. My recommendation is you study conjunctions. Conjunctions are very useful for connecting ideas. All right. At 9.09er, we have a class called Grammar 7. And even our book, Grammar Essentials, will provide you with easy to digest information about conjunctions. All right. Who has this kind of problem? I cannot speak fluently because I have too many ideas. Have you ever experienced that? I cannot speak continuously. <laughs> I have a lot of things to say. Has that ever happened to you? Ethel admits it. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, look at your last name, Makahilo. So maybe you're already, you know, experiencing <laughs> severe headache while you're coming up with ideas. So your last name is Makahilo. 
So for the non-Filipino speakers, makahilo means it, it's something that's prone to headache. Hilo means headache in the Philippines. All right. So Ethel, Jill, Emily, Sunny May, yeah, they can they can relate. Del says no, I cannot relate to this problem. I don't have a lot of ideas. Ah, uh, don't worry, we're gonna we're gonna address that problem via content speaking. Jacinto, Liz, and Janice also have the same problem. All right, so here's the thing: out of excitement and fear. I have too many ideas. Okay. So here's the thing, guys. You need to come to terms with the fact that you will not be able to bring up all of your ideas. And some of you can probably admit or relate to this. Your brain already offered an idea, but you felt it was too shallow, so you rejected it. Hmm, I don't like that answer. I don't like that answer. I will change my mind. That's how you get in trouble. When your brain offers you something, take it. Why? It comes from recent memory. The moment that you reject your idea, your own answers coming from your own brain, you're now forcing yourself to get answers from distant memory. These are things that happened a long, long time ago. And you're going to have a harder time defending those, discussing those, because you cannot remember them clearly. When your brain offers you something, use it immediately. Trust your brain to supply you with all the information that you need. Rely on recent, not distant memory. Come to terms with the fact that you cannot talk about everything. Just use two or three ideas. That's it. All right? Another thing you can do, apart from coming to terms with the fact that you don't need to talk about everything, apart from using recent memory, it really helps if you can organize information. Remember, the grading criteria is fluency and cohesion. So not only are you going to give long answers, not only are you going to speak without unnecessary pauses, you have to present information in a way that the listener can easily follow what you're saying. So number one, we have chronological order. When you're talking about historical events, when you're talking about your experiences, you definitely want to use this approach so that your listener can immediately understand what happened first, what happened second, what happened third, and what was the most recent event. What about spatial order? This refers to places. So if you're talking about places, you want to talk about something closer to you first, and you will talk about the farthest from you. How do we get to Trinoma? Well, I'm currently living in Barangay Bahay Toro in Quezon City, which is a very small community. It's located around 30 to 45 minutes away from Trinoma Mall. So to get to Trinoma, I have to take a cab and the cab will drive or travel along Congressional Avenue, take a left turn to Mindanao Avenue, passing by a lot of residential areas, and we will be traversing Mindanao Avenue for about 20 minutes until we see Trinoma. On our way there, apart from residential areas, we're going to drive by hotels and this hospital called Veterans Memorial Medical Center. Spatial. I started from my home and then I talked about all the things that I will pass by or drive by on my way to Trinoma. Then we have causal order. This is perfect when you're talking about causes and effects. You can discuss all the causes first and then all the effects later or for each cause, it will be immediately followed by an effect. And then we have the problem-solution order. You can discuss problems first and then discuss solutions afterwards. Or for every problem, bring up a solution. Finally, we have topical order. You're just going to talk about things according to what feels important to you. This should be your last resort because it's hard to structure answers based on topical order because it's very subjective. Another reason why people get bad scores or low scores for fluency and cohesion, again, I already touched on this, hesitation and too much self-correction. We already touched on lexical resource earlier. Stop thinking of a better word. But we can also the same thing about grammatical rules. All right? Who here has stopped, stuttered, <laughs> and paused because they're checking the grammar of their sentence? Anybody? Were you guilty of that? I really like it that almost everyone is relating to the mistake, which really supports the fact that these are common mistakes, right? Oh, si Rochelle nag-raise na lang ng hand. Rochelle, Rochelle, Rochelle rather just raised her hand. 
she did not want to to type anymore. It's easier. I'll just press the raise hand button. <laughs> It's easier than to type. Okay, Jazz can relate. Who else? Let's see. How about on Facebook? Who relates? LCS. LCS, you remind me so much of a professional esports league. LCS. Okay, Lakai. Oh, Lakai. Lakai, isn't that an Ilocano term? Lakai. Oh. Lakai relates. Oh. Karamiya relates. Oh. Karamiya. That, sound, that sounds like a cake. Don't we have a bakery in the Philippines that sells delicious cakes and the name of that, that particular um, that particular store is um, Karamiya? Not sure though. Huh? Not sure. Nancy. Nancy says, what? Oh, she also agrees. Okay, she also relates. All right. All right. Nancy relates. So was Francis. Okay. So let's go back to that. Here's my advice, guys. Number one, if you don't know the grammatical rule, what's the point of correcting yourself? Does that make sense? What's the point of correcting yourself if you don't know the grammatical rule? You're only just going to make more mistakes. Why not just let that one single mistake go? Instead of trying to correct yourself, only to commit more mistakes. That's your common mistake. <laughs> It's like you don't know the correct answer, but you're trying to give the wrong answer, uh, the correct answer. No. No. As Elsa said in Frozen, let it go. Let it go. Like I said earlier, knowledge of grammar should be automatic. It should be automatic. English should be instinctive. Native speakers actually learn grammar not by studying rules. They learn through situations. Go ask a native speaker, the, the average native speaker, all right? Not, not a native speaker that teaches English. Because obviously, a native speaker that teaches English knows the rules. This person will break down the rules for you and explain every single thing and concept supporting another rule and the exemptions to the rule. That's not what I'm referring to. I'm referring to the average native speaker that does not teach English. Go ask them to explain subject verb agreement to you. They probably can't. They're just going to say, well, that's just the way things are. Because they learned English by looking at situations. Filipinos like to study grammar by memorizing rules. And while that can help, it's not the only way to go. More than memorization, application is the key. Look at situations. That's how children learn how to use English. Have you noticed that this current generation of toddlers and babies, they're so fluent at English? Don't you, don't you notice that? My sister's son, he speaks nothing but English. I go to church, a lot of the kids speak English. Their parents did not teach them that. They're just watching YouTube kids. They're watching Thomas and Friends. And they're just looking at situations where certain English words are applied. And they just use them. You want to become better at English? Think like a kid. Think like a kid. Don't focus too much on the, the words of the rules. Focus on the situations. But going back, if you don't know the rule, don't correct yourself. Let it go. Let it go. Now, if this happened during coaching, or let's say your coach said, oh, Francisco, you have a problem with subject-verb agreement, what you should do now is to study the rules, apply it regularly so that it becomes automatic to you. You attend one-on-one -on -one coaching or you take the actual exam, you do your best to apply the rule automatically. If you cannot apply it automatically, let it go. Let it go. You don't need to be perfect to make your dreams come true. Because the problem with hesitation and self-correction, you just make your mistake more noticeable. You're calling the attention of the examiner toward your mistake instead of giving yourself the chance to have your mistake be overlooked by the examiner. So don't hesitate too much. It also helps if you commit to your answers. Don't change your mind anymore. Whether it's vocabulary or grammar related, don't change your mind anymore. When you say something, stick to it. Some people like to change their mind and their answers when they're already talking. It's too late by then. Don't. Don't change your answers anymore. There's no such thing as a better answer. You don't need perfect grammar. There's no such thing as a better word. Commit, commit, commit. Be decisive. Okay? Some people are also pausing for a long time. 
because they're trying to come up with impressive answers. And again, I want to reiterate, this is a speaking test, not an IQ test. Don't be pressured to give mind-blowing answers. Just give answers that you're comfortable with. Just give answers that you know. It's good to come up with impressive answers, but it's not a requirement. You can review the IELTS band descriptors. Nothing there says that you should give impressive answers. Some people, they commit long pauses because they're distracted. You know, they're daydreaming. They're already thinking that they failed the test even before taking the test. Do you have that kind of mentality? Who has that kind of mentality? First time to take the test, but they're already thinking that they're going to fail. Or maybe somebody who has failed the test before and they think that they will fail it again. Are you like that? Come on. No shame in admitting it. Are you guilty? <laughs> guilty as charged. My goodness. Emily's not guilty. That's good. Anyone who can relate to that statement? Nobody? Claudine can relate to it. Ethel can relate to it. All right. All right. So, for those who are taking the test for the first time, this may sound like some mumbo jumbo, but but what I what I want you to remember is if you're taking the test for the first time, you have no evidence that you will fail. So why are you scaring yourself? Right? It's true. It's true. Of course, the possibility of failing persists. The possibility of failing exists. But isn't it also possible that you can get the score that you want? Remember that what ifs work both ways. Start doubting your doubts. Start believing your beliefs. Because when you start telling yourself that you will fail, I'm telling you right now, you will. And why do I say that? Well, I don't need to look further than the philosopher René Descartes. What did René Descartes say? You think, therefore, you are. If you think you're a failure, then you will be a failure because you're programming your brain to fail. Think like a winner. As hard as that sounds, think like a winner. It may not guarantee the win, the win but it will definitely make you feel a lot better. Remember that the IELTS is like a business venture. You're taking a risk. And risks come at a cost. But I promise you whatever happens after your IELTS exam, after your coaching sessions, you will come out a better person. You have grown, especially in terms of your communication skills. So I'm not looking at losers right now. Each and every one of you, I'm looking at you as winners. You're all winners. Why? Some people out there they're so gutsy. They're going to take the test without, take, without even preparing for it. Look at them. They're so confident. Oblivious to how difficult the IELTS is. And what's going to happen? They're going to retake it. They're going to feel bad about their communication skills. When in reality, they could have passed the first time around. It's just that they were not even humble enough to admit that they need help. Now, I'm not denying. I'm not denying the fact that there are people that were fortunate enough to get a good score in the IELTS during their first attempt without the help of any review center. But guys, let's be realistic. What is the ratio or the percentage of people that got good scores without the help of a review center compared to people who got good scores with a review center? In your circle alone, how many passed without a review center? How many passed with a review center? Right? Just think about your licensure exams. How much is the cost of your licensure exam? 500, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000? And you got a review center for an exam like that. But for an exam like the IELTS, that's, that costs 11,000 pesos. You don't want to be helped by a professional. I think there's something wrong with that approach. But going back, you're a winner. With or without a review center, the fact that you're here, you're a winner. Why? You're humble enough to admit that you need help. You're humble enough to respect the IELTS. You're humble enough to prepare. No matter how good you are. Your, humili your humility will go a long way. It will serve you well, not only for the IELTS, but for a lot of things in your life. You want to be prepared. You're a winner. 
I'm telling you right now, there are also people out there that can easily ace the IELTS exam. But you're going to do better than them. Why? Because they don't have the courage to take the test. But you do. You do. You have the courage to drop everything. You have the courage to take your leisure time for granted just to make your dreams come true. I don't see losers. In this Zoom meeting, on Facebook right now, I see winners. How many winners do I see? On Facebook, there are 248. Oh, in Zoom, how many do I see? I see 56 winners. Nothing but winners. So stop telling yourself that you will fail. While nothing is guaranteed, you're a winner. What if works both ways? Yeah, you might pass. Yeah, you might fail. But why should we focus on the negative? That's not going to help us. Right? Focus on the what if if you succeed. Okay? I want you to focus on that. Now, for those who have taken the test before, I want you to find comfort in the fact that this time around, it will be different. Because this time, you're not starting from scratch. This time, you're starting from experience. Hmm. The question now is, are you going to learn from your mistakes? You took the test before. You did not attend a lot of coaching sessions. What do we do? We attend more coaching sessions. We took the test without giving ourselves enough time to prepare. Oh, the second time we take it, the third time we take it, have plenty of time to prepare. I took the test, self-studying. Oh, this time, get a review center. I took the test and I did not sleep very well the night before. I, I partied. Oh, you take care of your body. That's it. The problem is if you're not learning from your mistake. Maybe that's why you're scared. Did you learn from your mistake? These are the hard truths that you have to face. Because the common mistake of people, we don't learn from our mistakes. Right? Sometimes it takes two, three, four, five times before we learn from it. Hmm. Are you affected? Because you kept coming back to your ex. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you keep going back to your ex after you broke up the first, second, third, and fourth time. Oh, what happened? Now you're heartbroken again. Mm. <laughs> you never learn. <laughs> you keep coming back to this guy with no label. Oh, what happened? You never learn. <laughs> You told yourself you want to lose weight. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, after working out, you drink milk tea. What are you doing at Gong Cha? What are you doing at Macau Imperial? Get out of there. <laughs> oh, you don't fight temptation, guys. You run away from it. Oh, how many times have you told yourself you're going to prepare for the IELTS and then you find yourself what? Watching Vicenzo? <laughs> Playing Mobile Legends? Oh, I thought you learned. Oh, you did not learn. <laughs> You're a slave of your impulses. That's why my Christianity plays a very big part. Not only with my teaching, but with my lifestyle. Because you have to learn to win against your flesh. Your impulses. You, you have to beat your impulses. Otherwise, you will be a slave of your impulse. When your brain is telling you to do something you know is wrong, Show your brain who's boss. This is your body. When your brain is telling you, let's watch one more Korean novella, no. I'm the boss. Break the cycle. When your brain is telling you, be afraid of coaching, no. Tell your brain, I'm the boss. I'm gonna go and attend one-on-one -on -one coaching. When your brain is telling you you're tired after 16 hours of working from the hospital, you sleep. <laughs> you don't fight that. That's not an impulse. That's your body telling you, we cannot do this anymore. <laughs> we won't understand anything. <laughs> There's no point undergoing coaching when we're too exhausted. Oh, those are two different things. That's not any more impulse. That's your brain telling you, stop. <laughs> Remember, the most important person in the IELTS exam is you. Without you, there's no test taker. Even if you know how to answer questions, if you're not physically present during your exam, it's meaningless. Take care of yourself. Oh. Dava. 
<laughs> I think we already touched on better words earlier, so we're not going to talk about that anymore. Um, this is another mistake that people make. They give short answers. Sometimes if the question is close-ended, they just answer with yes or no. Don't do that. Remember, your job is to demonstrate the ability to talk for a long time. So when you give a response, make sure to support it right away. Okay? Give an explanation. Give an example. Give a reason immediately. So what if it's close-ended? Answer with yes or no, but follow it up immediately with supporting ideas. Do you like to travel? I absolutely do because with traveling, I'm able to meet a lot of people and this helps me get a better perspective of other cultures. At the same time, when I'm traveling, I get to see the world. When I wasn't able to travel, I was stuck in the Philippines and I thought there's nothing more to life but this. But then when I left the Philippines and I moved to Australia, I realized that the world is such a big place. And that's why I discovered my passion for traveling. Oh, di ba? So just answer with yes or no. Hmm. Okay. Give me a name of your favorite celebrity. Type your answer in chat. Hmm. Favorite celebrity. Hmm. Who's your favorite celebrity? Like if you see this person, oh my gosh. I'm in heaven. Give the name of your favorite celebrity. Type it in chat. Favorite celebrity. Don't worry, I'm not going to make you talk. Hmm. Willie Revilla me. <laughs> Angelina Jolie, Cardo Dalisay. <laughs> so you like Coco Martin, basically. If you said Cardo Dalisay. Any other answers? Jason Momoa. Wow. <laughs> you like big guys, huh? Mandy Moore. BT BTS, that's a group name. One person. My goodness. There's a lot of people there. I'm talking to the Facebook people now, Zoom guys. Jolina Magdalene. <laughs> That's so old school. Ellen Adarna, Hayden Co, Marian Rivera, all right. Keanu Reeves, oh. Leonardo DiCaprio, Ivana Alawi, mm. Chris Evans, Lily Collins, Michael Flores. Like the, I can like tell people's age by their favorite celebrities. Alex Gonzaga. Okay, let's try Alex Gonzaga. Let's go with... Shasha's answer. Oh, let's say, oh, Shasha, do you like Alex Gonzaga? Yes. Uh, like, that's all Shasha did. Oh. So, good afternoon. Welcome to the IELTS speaking test. Who's your favorite celebrity? Alex Gonzaga. Do you like Alex Gonzaga? Yes. Like you and the examiner will have a staring contest if you don't give a follow-up. To that. Oh, do you like Alex Gonzaga? Yeah, I do because she's very funny and she also has this bubbly personality. I also like the fact that she's able to make serious interviews sound less serious and her presence is all over the internet. Sometimes I see her on Facebook, sometimes on YouTube. So I cannot help but like this person because I see her all the time. Oh, don't just say yes or no. Follow it up. Follow it up. All right? Give follow-up answers, all right? Be automatic. Be automatic, all right? Now, there are people who just try to answer questions in IELTS speaking part two. So for those who don't know, the IELTS speaking section is divided into three parts. We have speaking part one, speaking part two, speaking part three. Speaking part one, the examiner is interviewing you. The examiner is just asking questions about familiar topics. Then speaking part two, you're given a topic with four bullet points. You have to discuss the four bullet points in two minutes. But before that, you have one minute to prepare. And then for speaking part three, it's a two-way conversation with the examiner. The examiner will ask about questions related to the topic of speaking part two. But these topics are a little bit more abstract. Now, going back to speaking part two. Some people, what they do, they just limit themselves with with the bullet points. All right, let me find a sample of speaking part two. Just bear with me here, guys. Ask cards. All right. So I'm going to share my screen with you. All 
All right. So this is what I hope you can see my screen. So this is what a topic card for speaking part two would look like. All right. So you're going to find a main topic, and under that, you have four subtopics. And it's really important for you to discuss all of these in two minutes. The common mistake of people when they're taking the IELTS exam, for one minute, they're just giving like one word answers for each of these bullet points. And that's why when they, when they look at their notes, their notes are not helping them. Because there's not a lot of things on their notes. What is the price that you would like to win? No, I want to win, let's say, uh, 4 million pesos, the jackpot of 6.45 Lotto. Let's just say, that's just an example. Let's just say that's what you want. Okay. How did you know about it? Oh, I saw it on the TV. Okay. What would you have to do to win it? Buy a ticket. Oh. Why would you like to buy this price? I want to buy a new house. Oh. Now, you see how few your words are. And then you start discussing it. Okay. Uh, describe a price that you would like to win. Okay. So one uh, you have to talk about this for two minutes. Oh, you set a timer. Two minutes. Oh. You will see that with this kind of response, you won't be able to talk for two minutes. Oh. oh. I would like to win the four million jackpot at the 645 Lotto in the Philippines. I learned about it from the TV. And in order to win it, I have to buy a ticket. And I want to win it because I want to buy a house. You see, there's nothing much going on. So how do you deal with this problem? Ask yourself more questions. Ask yourself more questions so that you can put more things on your notes. And remember, when you're taking notes, don't try to write complete sentences. If you're doing that, if you're trying to write complete sentences, in speaking part two, that's self-sabotage. Why? If you write complete sentences, what you're doing is you're preparing a script. And when you prepare a script, once you read all of the things on your notes, you will find yourself with nothing to say. If you truly understand what you want to talk about, you just need a few words to ignite your memory from your notes. You were not meant to read your notes. Your notes are supposed to remind you of what you're going to talk about. Treat your notes like a PowerPoint presentation, not a script. Who's guilty of making a script? Show yourself. <laughs> I will not condemn you, but I just want to know if it is a common problem. Rachel admitted to it. Thank you, Rachel, for your honesty. Anyone else who's guilty of this? Do you write a script or do you write your notes? Okay, Francisco, guilty of this too. Anyone else? Don't write a script. Prepare your notes. Don't write a script. Prepare your notes. When you're preparing your notes, it means that you just have a few words there. And those words will remind you of what you're going to talk about. If you are reading your script, you will run out of things to say. Because realistically speaking, you cannot prepare a script in one minute. If you write a script, you're denying yourself the chance to put more valuable information on your notes. Don't write a script, write notes. Keywords only. How do you start adding more stuff on your notes? Asking yourself more questions. Nurses, you know how to write an incident report. What are the questions that an incident report answers? You have who, what, when, where. Why and how? Look at one bullet point and try to ask yourself more questions. All right? Describe a price that you would like to win. What is the price for? The price is for what? Okay, the price is for winning the 645 lottery. Okay, of PCSO. Okay. When? When do they do the draw? Ah, see when. Now, you may not know the exact answer. It's okay. Some people, they sacrifice their fluency for details. Remember that the examiner does not know what is right or what is wrong. It's your story. I'm not encouraging you to lie, but I'm encouraging you to be confident even if you don't know the answer. 
Because the examiner is not focused on details. The examiner is focused on your ability to speak English. So let's say uh, 6.45, they draw, they draw it every Tuesday. Uh, let's say 10 p.m. Oh, you already answered when? Where? Where? Uh, they do it at the PCSO office in Quezon City. That may not be entirely true, but who cares? Right? How did you learn about it? Okay, I learned about it on RTV. Okay, what channel? Oh, PTV4. Okay, what is PTV4? Government broadcasting station. See, you're already giving a lot of information by asking yourself more questions. What do you have to do to win it? Okay, buy a ticket. How? How much is the ticket? 25 pesos. Where are you going to buy it? There is a ticketing booth near my place. Where is your place? Okay, Barangay Bahay Toro, Quezon City. Oh, see? Don't write scripts. Ask yourself more questions so that you can give more answers. Why would you like to win this prize? I want to buy a house. Where is this house? It's in Forbes Park, a very rich neighborhood in the Philippines. Where is that? Makati. Who is the house for? Parents. Oh, as easy as that. Right? Ask yourself more questions. Now, obviously, it took me more than one minute to write all of these things. And that's why you have to practice. That's why you have to practice so that you develop the ability to write faster. So let's try. Let's try using all these answers and let's see if we will be able to talk for two minutes or more. The objective is to talk for more than two minutes, okay? You don't have to talk exactly for two minutes. But if you can talk for more than two minutes, that's better, all right? There are a lot of prizes that a person can win nowadays. But me personally, I would like to win the 4 million peso jackpot of the Philippine Charity Sweepstakes Office. They have this lottery contest called 645. And normally, they draw the winners every Tuesday at 10 p.m. at their office in Quezon City. I learned about this particular prize and the lottery on our TV while watching PTV4. So PTV4 is the government's broadcasting station in the Philippines. It shows us not only the lottery, but all the achievements and projects of the Philippine government, as well as news and current events happening around the country. In order to win this prize, I need to buy a ticket for the 645 lottery, and this costs 25 pesos. I can easily do this because there is a ticketing booth close to my residence at Barangay Bahay Toro in Quezon City. So barangay is actually a word that we use to refer to communities. It doesn't have an exact English counterpart, but I would say community or neighborhood would be the closest when it comes to translating the word to English. I would really love to win this prize because I want to buy a house for my parents. There is a very big mansion located in Forbes Park, a very rich neighborhood in Makati, Philippines. And I want my, par my parents to live there for the rest of their lives because it's my way of showing gratitude for all the things that they have done for me. I also want this house because it happens to be close to my place of work. I'm currently working as a consultant for a BPO located in Taguig City, which is the city closest to Makati. But the problem is I'm having a hard time traveling to our workplace because I'm living in Quezon City right now. So if I can move to Makati, my travel time will be extremely shorter. So see, I spoke for two minutes. And it's all because there's a lot of things happening on my notes. Does that make sense, guys? So what have we learned? Don't write scripts. And start asking yourself more questions. All right? I hope you learned something from that. Okay? Then, there are people who talk too much. They get carried away. And because of that, they get off topic. The last thing that you want to do is be off topic. Because even if your English is good, if you are giving an answer that is irrelevant to the question, <laughs> that tells the examiner that your ability co to comprehend English is at a low level. So my advice, try to answer the question in just three to four sentences. That way, you prevent yourself from getting carried away or going off topic. Now, let's talk about the common mistakes that people make when it comes to lexical research. So imagine that for more than an hour, we're just focused on fluency and cohesion because majority of the mistakes that people make, it's related to those things. So for lexical resource, there are test takers who misuse words. 
And again, I want to go back to my original point. Do not sacrifice clarity for better words. Because sometimes people, out of their fear of repetition, they will try to paraphrase even though it's wrong. And instead of solving the problem, they create more problems. Do not be afraid to repeat words if you're able to maintain clarity. Had you known the better word, you will automatically remember it. Before the exam, try to explore synonyms of your favorite words. That's the effective way of expanding your vocabulary. Once you discover these synonyms, practice using them. So come the actual exam, you will be able to use them instantaneously. But going back, if you don't know the better word, just repeat a word. All right? I also discourage you from using complicated, complex, or highfalutin language. Some people think that this is necessary. No, it's not. Even examiners will discourage you from using highfalutin language. Highfalutin language becomes more of a problem than a solution if you are not using it accurately. Because the danger of using highfalutin language incorrectly is that your listener will misunderstand you. Some people also end up using the same words over and over again. And I already I touched on this. It's really important to study synonyms for that purpose. There are also individuals who tend to use transition signals over and over again, the same transition signals, especially the ones that they use in writing task two. Are you guilty of this? You're speaking and you're using words like in addition, furthermore, moreover, on the other hand. Do you use those words when you're talking? Do you? Are you guilty of that? <laughs> Abby, Francisco are guilty of this. So as Sunny May, Driana, <laughs> Drina, sorry, Drina. How about the people on Facebook? Are you guilty of this? Oh, Christian says something, said something. How I wish I can think and speak just like you. So who said that? Um, can't remember who that guy was. Okay, to the person who said, how I wish I can speak and think like you. You wouldn't want to think like me. You know why? I believe you're smarter than me. Most of the people watching this broadcast right now, I know that you're medical professionals. You're smarter than me. I'll never get tired of saying that. Go ask Miss Gladys. I always say here at IFNG, nurses are smarter than I will ever be. Why? I don't know how to save a life. You could. You're telling me that my ability to teach English is far greater than your ability to save a life? No. You're smarter than me. You're solving more complicated problems than I am. You don't have to think like me to succeed. If you notice, what I'm trying to tell you is that you don't need to be a different person to make your dreams come true. You don't need to be Marlon Viardo Jr. You don't need to be Irvin Temporal 2.5. You don't need to be the clone of Brian Shawson to make your dreams come true. You just have to be the best version of you. That's why I'm telling you how to avoid common mistakes. I'm not telling you to think and talk like me. I'm telling you what to avoid. All right? Because what was given to me was not taken away from you. And what was given to you was not taken away from me. Each of us, we're wonderfully created by the Creator, uniquely made, because the world would be a boring place if we're all the same type of people. Do you agree? Right? I mean, imagine dating a person just like you. That would be freaking boring. Right? Imagine dating the same person. Of course, you want to have similarities. Right? You want to have similarities, but you don't want to date the same person. It's just like looking at the mirror. You, you don't have to be me. You just have to be the best version of Ethel, the best version of Ray, the best version of Rigoberto. And that will happen if you will avoid these mistakes. All right? I want you to remember that you got to this point by overcoming so many obstacles. All right? I never get tired of saying that. A lot of you are nurses. You had to pass nursing school, right? That's four to five years of nursing school. That alone is an impressive feat. Why? Some of your classmates dropped out of nursing school. Am I correct? 
some of them dropped out of nursing school. You are among the last people standing. Graduating from, from nursing school is an impressive feat in its own right. But you're not yet satisfied. After climbing that mountain, what did you do? You climbed another mountain. You passed your PRC licensure exam. Oh, you're not yet done? You passed your NCLEX exam. And you're telling me you want to be like me? I, I never did those things. <laughs> you are the cream of the crop. You don't need to be lone. You just need to be you. You're the cream of the crop. And at 9.09er, we make you creamier. <laughs> okay, remember that. Okay, type it in chat. Type it in the comment section. I am the cream of the crop. Okay, cream of the crop. Type it. Believe it. You think, therefore, you are. If you don't believe it, then that's your problem. Because I can encourage you all you want. But if you don't want to believe yourself, ah, there's nothing I can do. You're the cream of the crop. That's crop, C-R-O-P, not craft. <laughs> Sorry if I mispronounced it. Crop, C-R-O-P. I am the cream of the crop. All right? You're the cream of the crop. And at niner, we make you creamier. <laughs> You want to be like me? You know, if you start thinking like me, look at your hairline. You want this kind of hairline? <laughs> look at that. Like my forehead is like three-fourths of my face. You want to have a brain like this? <laughs> Can you see the real estate that I'm dealing with? <laughs> I don't think you want that. You don't want the smoke. You don't want the smoke. <laughs> okay, so going back, um, I was talking about the overuse of transition signals, including expressions like furthermore, moreover, and in addition. Now, here's my question. If you like watching Hollywood films, let's say Marvel movies, have you ever heard Marvel characters like Spider-Man using words like that? Furthermore, we have to save Iron Man. <laughs> moreover, we have to stop the opponents. No, you don't, because they don't sound natural. So when you're speaking, I suggest instead of using those words, use coordinating conjunctions. So what are the coordinating conjunctions? The fanboys. For and nor, but, or, yet, and so. Fanboys. Those are going to sound more natural. If you want, you can still throw in some of the furthermores and more overs there, but I don't recommend their overuse. Rely more on the fanboys. They will make you sound more natural. And even if you use conjunctions over and over again, there's nothing wrong with that. You want to show the examiner that you can use different action words, adjectives, and adverbs. For other parts of speech, leave them alone. Okay? Some people also like using some adverbs over and over again. Chris Aquino is guilty of this. Of this. You know what's her favorite um, adverb? But I'm referring to Chris Aquino when she was still super popular, not this version of Chris. This version of Chris, she's dealing with a lot of issues. Of course, she has walked away from the limelight, so maybe her speech pattern has changed. But when she was really young, and I'm talking about mid-2000s, I think, she was hosting a lot of game shows. Her favorite expression back then was, actually. Actually, boy. Actually. Actually. <laughs> Oh, see, even Dell knows it. So, some people are also guilty of that. I mean, come on, Chris Aquino is very fluent in English and she's doing that. So, what more other people? Try to record yourself and identify if you're overusing an adverb. And of course, avoid overusing it. So, instead of saying actually, sometimes say extremely, <laughs> really, <laughs> hardly. <laughs> but no, um, adverbs have a correct of course, application. Um, actually, you use it for information that's surprising or when you're saying something that is true. Um, really and very, really and very are words that I do not really endorse. Very is actually a very good word, but it doesn't really showcase your ability to 
effectively express yourself. For example, instead of saying very hot, why not say scorching? Instead of saying very hungry, why not say famished? Instead of saying very tired, why not say exhausted? So try to avoid very. Very is a sign of limited vocabulary. There are always better ways to to express your idea than to use very. But going back to my original point, if you don't know the better word, then just stick to available words, words that you know. Avoid paroting the examiner. There are test takers that are guilty of this. They will repeat the question. Please don't do that. What's your favorite tourist attraction? My favorite tourist attraction, don't do that. You, you have two options. Okay, You have two options. You either paraphrase the question or just answer the question directly. Paraphrasing. Uh, talk about your favorite tourist destination. Well, in my opinion, the best tourist spot would be Boracay. Paraphrasing. Answer the question directly. Okay. What is your favorite tourist attraction? I want to say Boracay because of its white sand and it also has pristine beaches. Oh, there you go. Beaches. Smile. Smile. When you don't smile, the long E sound will shout, sound like a short I. And you will sound like you're saying something bad. Um, some people, they're guilty of having a standard introduction for IELTS speaking part two. Describe a prize that you would like to win. Today, I want to talk about a prize I would like to win. Describe your favorite book. Today, I will talk about my favorite book. Describe a dish you know how to cook. Today, I will talk about a dish I know how to cook. No. Try to introduce the topic in a less obvious manner. Talk about a dish you know how to cook. I really love eating. And when people ask me what's my favorite dish to cook, I will say spaghetti. Ah? Huh? Make it less obvious. Try to come up with something that you would probably say to a friend. What's your favorite drink? I love drinking coffee. And when it comes to coffee, my favorite is flat white. Huh? Flat white, no? I even have a pickup line for coffee. You want to hear it? <laughs> I know I'm going to reserve that for a special occasion. <laughs> I'm not going to say it because someone else might use it. If you want to hear it, talk to me in private. I charge one Starbucks voucher. <laughs> Are you guilty of this? When you don't know what to say, you murmur in Filipino. <laughs> Can you tell me something about your knowledge of biotechnology? biotechnology. <laughs> Can you elaborate on the differences between the works of Leonardo DiCaprio and Pablo Picasso? And then before you know it, a monster shows up. You're actually summoning a monster. You're speaking in Latin. <laughs> you might scare the examiner. <laughs> Can you please elaborate on child labor? Let the body sit. <laughs> Suddenly became a rock song, right? Let the body sit the floor. Let the body sit the floor. <laughs> Suddenly you're screaming. Don't do that. Don't murmur. Why are you murmuring in Filipino? Even if you don't know the topic, like I said, try to use redirection. Just give it your best shot. Give it your best shot. Yeah. At the end of the day, you will be graded based on your English. Not on the quality of your answer alone. Tell me something about biotechnology. Well, Mr. Examiner, I really don't know anything about that. But given the chance, if I get to speak to you again, what I will do is tonight I will read a book about biotechnology. And hopefully, when I'm asked the same question, I will be able to talk about it in a more detailed manner. Mm. You don't know biotechnology. Oh, your English is so good. Ah. Hmm. That's how you deal with it. That's how you deal with it. Hmm? Hmm. What do you know about the works of Leonardo da Vinci? To tell you the truth, I don't know this person. I heard this name one time while watching this movie called The Da Vinci Code. But I never really understood the significance of Leonardo da Vinci because I found that movie too boring. But one of my favorite Ninja Turtles is Leonardo. 
So maybe Leonardo da Vinci and Leonardo the Turtle have similarities. Maybe they're both brave. And that's why Leonardo da Vinci is known by a lot of people. Maybe it has something to do with courage and valor. Mm. So you answer the question. Ah, you turned Leonardo da Vinci into a Ninja Turtle. <laughs> right? Still close. You know, you admitted that you don't know Leonardo da Vinci. So you talk about Leonardo, the Ninja Turtle. <laughs> Oh, who likes grammar? I saw a lot of people saying what makes speaking difficult is grammar. Mm. Do you have the same kind of opinion? I don't like grammar. <laughs> Lakaya sa question. Sir, how come the examiner does not smile? Try talking to a lot of people for eight hours <laughs> who give you pretty much the same answers. Are you gonna smile? <laughs> What would you feel, Lakai, if the examiner says, why should I smile? You're here. <laughs> no, don't, don't, don't worry about them smiling or not. Kill them with kindness. If they're not smiling, smile at them. You know? Maybe they, they're just having a bad day, but it won't really affect your score that much. Smile at them. You know, maybe if you're a good conversationalist, you're going to put them in a good mood. I like talking to people who are not smiling. Why? Because I want to make people happy. Oh. <laughs> I should be a politician. I want you to be happy. <laughs> I'd rather talk to quiet people. Like, what's the point of talking to someone like me? You're already happy. You don't need me. That's what I've been saying. You don't date yourself. <laughs> Why should I talk to someone who's also noisy? Like, you and I in the same room? Man, get out of here. I need someone quiet. So if, you're, if your examiner is not smiling, be that light in the test center. Huh? Hmm. It's difficult to smile during the exam. I don't find it difficult because I know I'll pass. Confidence. Supreme confidence, Richel. That's what you need. That's what you need. Smile because you know you'll pass. Oh, you know the technique to passing? Go to Twitter. Go to Twitter. And then write IELTS speaking 7.0 QT. <laughs> Go to Twitter. <laughs> hey, if it worked for me in Mendoza, it might work for you. But the best weapon <clears throat> for making your dreams come true is it starts with letter P. What's letter P? Ends with R. You'll probably say prepare. Oh, no, prepare ends with letter E. Yes, prayer. Again, Christianity is a very vital part of my methodology. And some of you may not subscribe to it. Some of you may not believe it. Some of you do. But personally, I have seen the Lord work in my life. I used to be an atheist, by the way. Yeah, two or three years ago, I think. Yeah. Imagine how fast my, my life moved forward from becoming an unbeliever. Now I'm serving the church. I can't even live a day without praying. Like, I'm, I, I feel anxious. I do not feel happy when I don't pray. I never claim that I'm a good instructor. But what I will say is, I'm the megaphone and God is the speaker. What I tell you is something I pray for him. I ask him to, you know, talk to me. Talk through me. Help me say the things that these people need to hear. I don't talk to you with a script. I don't talk to you with a plan. I have a presentation with keywords. Just a bunch of words that I have to like, you know, come up with something to, to help you prepare for the IELTS exam. And why am I working effectively? Because of him. If your will is aligned with his, I strongly believe you will succeed. Now, whether you believe that or not is up to you. But I believe that. And that's what makes me effective. That's my testimony. I'm only as good as how my God wants me to be. And he wants me to be really good at what I do. That's why I'm confident. Why, I, why do I smile with every exam? I know I'm going to ace it. I'm going to pass one way or another. I took my civil service exam, I was smiling. I took my IELTS, I was smiling. I took my TOEFL, I was smiling. But back then, my smile was the smile of an arrogant person. Now imagine if I did all those things now with God supporting me. I have more reasons to smile. I took my exams, I was an atheist. 
If an atheist can have confidence, so should you if you're a believer. Because you have a power greater than yourself that will make your dreams come true. That's why I also promote embracing imperfection. You know why? You don't need to be perfect. You have to actually accept the fact that you are insufficient and you come to Him to be completed. You accept the fact that you have shortcomings. That's why you look for help. It's like the story of Moses and Aaron. You know, God will place people in your lives to help you. Moses was quick to acknowledge that God. Why? Why did you choose me to talk to, per- to Pharaoh? I'm not even a good speaker. And God said, you know, dude, I got your back. I'm going to give you someone that will help you. Boom. Moses gets Aaron. Whatever you have, surrender it to him. Accept that it's not enough and let him amplify it. That's the lesson of the feeding of the 5,000. That's the lesson of the feeding of, five, of the 5,000. A small, a small amount of fish, a few pieces of bread, give it to Jesus. You know, let, the, the problem sometimes with, with Christians and Catholics, we, we forget that God's problem is God's problem. We, we are trying to solve his problem. <laughs> give it to him. <laughs> give it to him. That's the problem. With, you do your best. Let him take care of the rest. You don't have to live a life full of anxiety. Let him worry about the problem. You did your part. That's it. Now, if you're worried, that suggests that you did not do your part. <laughs> if you're worried you know for a fact you did, you did not do something but I tell you I tell you even if you make mistakes he's gonna be there to save you that's how that's how much he loves you look at Peter he asked Peter to to jump on the water to walk with him Peter doubted oh, Pete, what happened to Peter Peter sunk but did Jesus abandon him? no Jesus approached him and said you know what get up buddy you of little faith. So <laughs> meaning to say, even if you make mistakes, he's going to come and rescue you. Chill. 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 When you're worried too much, it means you're trying to solve everything on your level. Do what you can. Do what you can. Chill. You don't have to be the hero of your story. You're the main character, but you don't have to be the hero. The writer of your story is not yet done. It's going to give you a happy ending. Si Avril Lavigne, my happy ending. So much for my happy ending. All right. Now, going back to grammar, the people are so afraid of it. And because of this, they end up, you know, committing grammatical errors simply because they don't finish their sentences. Instead of delivering incomplete sentences, just finish it. I want to go back to my original point earlier about chunking. Deliver... A short, complete sentence first. That way you minimize the uh, opportunities or the chances that you will make grammatical lapses. Because some people, what they do, they will try to deliver a long sentence. They will forget the first half of the sentence. They will connect another group of words. And because they forgot the first half, the grammatical consistency is gone. Finish your sentence. That way it will be grammatically correct. Because if you cut off your sentence, you will forget the first half. Whatever will come next will most likely be grammatically wrong. Finish your sentences. And this is a good example right here. My father is a businessman and, 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 and she knows how to make money. You forget the first half. Or just finish the sentence quickly. And another thing, Filipinos especially have a problem with subject-verb agreement. So the general rule there is if your subject is singular... In the present tense, it, the action word should end in S. If the subject is plural, the action word should not end in S. But the thing that makes subject-verb agreement difficult are the exemptions to the rule. At 9.09, we discuss the exemptions to the rule. And this is discussed in Grammar 2. So if I have Niner students right now, hey, what are you doing? Watch Grammar 2. Watch Grammar 2. Okay? So there's also some problems with nouns and pronouns. You know, they're contradicting one another. Sometimes the noun is singular, the pronoun is plural. Sometimes the noun is masculine, the pronoun is feminine. Be careful with that, okay? We also want to bring up prepositions. This is a common problem among people in the Philippines. Why is that? We don't have a lot of prepositions in the Philippines. And that's why we discourage people from translating. When you translate, 
there's a good chance that you will use the wrong preposition. So at 9.09er, we talk about prepositions in detail in Grammar 6. But again, another option if you're not a 9er student is to buy our Grammar book. Prepositions are discussed there easily, all right? So be careful with that. Also take note, there are prepositional phrases. Words that you have to partner with specific prepositions. For example, you cannot say focus in. You always say focus on. That's the reality of it. Focus on. Don't say focus in. Focus on. Okay? Concentrate on. When do we use in as a preposition of place? The, the confusing part about in, we use it for parts of a building, but we also use it for big places. Big places like countries. He lives in China. Big place. City. He lives in Quezon City. Big place. Country. He lives in the Philippines. Big place. Continent. China is in Asia. In Asia. We also use it for neighborhoods. He lives in Bel Air. But we also use it for parts of a building. Oh, he's in the bathroom. He's in the conference room. He's in the garden. He's in the kitchen. So that's the problem with in. What about on? You use it for flat surfaces. You use it for streets. And you see me waiting for you on the corner of the street. You also use it for corners, right? Intersection, you use at. These things we cannot discuss in just a few minutes. So if you want to improve your knowledge of prepositions, attend Grammar 6 or buy our grammar book. But basically, another thing that I would recommend when it comes to grammar, if you don't know the rule, stay away from it. Stay away from it. There are other ways to express your ideas. You don't have to know every single rule of English grammar. So when it comes to mistakes with pronunciation, um, some people, there's a tendency for them to, again, become too excited, become too nervous. We forget to breathe. Do you forget to breathe? <laughs> you have to breathe. Come on, nurses. Why do we forget the power of deep breathing? When you're not talking, breathe. When you're pausing, breathe. Also use hand gestures to help you release tension. Mm. But don't overdo it. Later, you're just gonna dance na. You know, when I was living in Quezon City, I was really very happy. So don't do that. <laughs> do it in moderation like teachers. Right? One of my favorite subjects when I was a student was Araling Panlipunan, or in English, it's social studies. And it helped us learn more about our culture, our tradition, and why Filipinos act a certain way. Mm -hmm. Hand gestures. Use it. Use it to complement what you're saying. The movement will help you release tension. Don't overdo it. Don't dance, all right? Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath when you're not the one talking. The examiner is asking a question. Take a deep breath. And then release air as you're talking. You know? So to help you loosen up. Every time you're pausing, take a deep breath. What's your favorite animal? I really love dogs because they're very loyal and friendly. I think the only problem with dogs is that they cannot take care of themselves, unlike cats. So I happen to own dogs and cats. And I noticed that cats, they don't need to be cleaned. They're able to clean themselves. But with dogs, you just have to like monitor them, feed them, and they need a lot of affection. They're very clingy. Cats are the complete opposite, but sometimes it's so disappointing to deal with them because they act as if they don't love you. Notice that when I'm pausing, I'm taking a deep breath. But don't do it as if you're trying to breathe fire to the examiner. <sighs> don't do that. <laughs> Some people, when they're talking, they're slurring. You know slurring? That's how you sound when you're drunk. Don't do that. Shake. Do you want some buttercup? Shake. Don't do that. Um, in order for you to avoid slurring, you have to open your mouth a little bit wider. That's why practicing in front of a mirror really helps. Okay? Don't slur because you're not sure with your answer. Again, we already talked about it. Even if you're not sure, just try to guess. At the end of the day, what matters is you're speaking. It's a speaking test, not an IQ test. All right? And 
practice answering questions. Attend one-on-one -on -one coaching so that, that you're familiar with the common themes in the IELTS speaking section. There are also people that are speaking in a monotonous manner. You have to express emotions, especially when the words that you're using convey emotions. What was the most memorable experience you had when you were in high school? I remember when I was in high school, I won most valuable player in our intramurals. I was very happy. Wow, you really look happy. Yes, I'm ecstatic. Right now, I'm in cloud nine. Wow. wow. So convincing. So convincing. Bravo. I should give you an Oscar award for that. An Oscar award that deserves the slap of Will Smith. No. <laughs> Come on. Try to add emotion. Don't be emotional. Just add some emotion. Add some gusto. Use facial expressions. What I normally tell my students when they're taking the exam, stop acting like a test taker. Be a storyteller. When you have that kind of mindset, your voice quality changes automatically. Be excited to share your life with the examiner. Think of the examiner as a person that you haven't seen for a long time. You know, when you're being reunited with a friend, you have not seen for years. There's this energy coming out of you that you just want to keep talking forever. That's what you need in the IELTS exam. Be excited. Look forward to sharing your life with the examiner. Are we clear? By doing so, you're able to use different intonation patterns. Also, volume helps. Changing your volume helps. You have to increase your volume for words that are important. So let me give you an example. So on the screen right now is a sentence, a very basic sentence. It says, we must study. In a monotonal manner, that's how I would say it. We must study. Now notice how this sentence will change its meaning when I change the volume of my voice depending on the word that I'm saying. We must study. By increasing the volume of my voice for the word we, I'm emphasizing participation. We must study. I'm emphasizing obligation. We must study. I'm emphasizing action. If you can change the volume of your voice for the ideas that you want to emphasize, that would be great. You also want to show the examiner that you can change your pace. If you're familiar with basketball, changing your pace helps you catch people off guard. And in the IELTS exam, this will help you command the attention of the examiner by catching them off guard. You talk slowly for that dramatic effect. You talk a little bit faster when you're talking about irrelevant stuff. I remember when I was still a student in high school, I've undergone a lot of experiences. Some of them are pretty bad, but the best ones, they include myself winning a lot of prizes for writing very beautiful essays. Some of them weren't really that good, but I still managed to win simply because my writing skills were more superior to my classmates. Fast and slow. A very good example of someone that speaks slowly but effectively would be Barack Obama. Now I know there's oil in the water. It's like he wants you to understand every single thing he says. Okay? So if you need inspiration for someone that talks slowly, then Barack Obama would be your guy. Someone that talks fast. I really cannot think of a lot of people, but I would like to put myself in that category. But hmm, fast talkers. A lot of native speakers actually speak fast. So just watch your average native speaker and you should get the idea of how to make a fast pace work for you. And then mispronunciation um, brought about by our regional accent. Now, here's what I want you to remember. Because in the Philippines, we have this very bad habit of making fun of people's regional accents. I don't like that. Personally, I don't like that. I wish we can put an end to that. Because for me, that's what makes you unique. That's what makes it beautiful. I mean, look at the U.S., they all have different accents. People in the South, they have a different accent from people in New York. People in Boston have a different accent from people in California. But it's not a big deal there. But somehow here in the Philippines, it's a big deal. I don't get it. I don't get it. We make fun of people that cannot pronounce certain words correctly because of the regional accent. So 
here's what I'll tell you. You are loved, you're important, and you're wonderful just the way you are. But remember, with the IELTS, we have to still pronounce English words correctly. Now, it's not your fault that you have your regional accent. It's a product of your environment. But what I can tell you is if you want to get a better score for pronunciation, try to watch the mouth movement of native speakers. Watch their mouth movement and then copy it. That will allow you to pronounce English words correctly. One of our more popular difficulties when it comes to pronouncing English words are the vowel sounds. Because in the Philippines, the vowel sounds are very, consonant, uh, very consistent, right? A, E, E, O, O. Regardless of the position of the letter A, it will produce the same sound. The A in the word APA, so it's the first and third letter, letter A, APA, the sound of A in APA is no different from the sound of A in the word BATA, where the letter A is the second and the fourth letter. Whereas in English, the position of the letter can greatly affect its sound. Airplane, letter A is the first word, A, airplane. But letter A in bat, 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 A, 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 A. So see, sometimes the position of the letter affects the sound that it produces. The letters beside the letter also affects the sound it produces. So one of our common problems would be what? The long I and the, the long E and the short I sound. There's a difference between reach and rich. There's a difference between feet and fit. There's a difference between heat and hit. We also have a problem with the P and F sound. Why? Originally, in the Filipino alphabet, we don't have F. Hmm. See? What are you eating? Fish. <laughs> Letter P sound. <laughs> It's so hot. Can you get me the pan? Hot? What are you doing, gonna do with the pan? Are you gonna cook? No, the pan. No, the one with the LEC, the pan. Ah, electric pan. <laughs> so, remember, with the F sound, upper teeth has to touch your lower lip. Fan. Fan. Same solution with the B and the V sound. Van. Van. There's a difference between, between ban and van. The problem in the Philippines, we have people with last names that start with D and we're butchering their name. Hmm? Hmm. Dr. Valenzuela. <laughs> but it's letter V. Va. Valenzuela. All right? Now, uh, other problems that we have when it comes to uh, pronunciation would be our lack of practice. So again, I want to, I want to go back to the importance of practice here. So let's skip these parts. Um, so how do you get a high score in speaking, like seven or higher? I recommend that you undergo at least 10 coaching sessions before you apply for a test. That way you can determine your common mistakes and you can take the necessary steps to solve these problems. I also recommend that you attend lectures for speaking here at IFNG. There are plenty of speaking lectures. And guys, the people behind IFNG, they're giving it to you for free. So maximize the tools that they're giving you. Maximize the resources, all right? And then I would say that you should also attend grammar lectures, review your materials, regardless of your review center. You know, at Niner, we, we admit that we are not the only source of IELTS information. But if you ever decide to join us, if you want to be taught by us, then we would be happy to help you, of course. Practice answering speaking questions. Um, let me give you guys a website where you can get a lot of speaking questions. I'm going to share it via Zoom. And uh, I don't know if we have IFNG staff members around that maybe they can share this link to our comment section. But maybe I can do that as well. I think I can comment on the... Facebook of IFNG. Yeah, I can comment there as well. Oh, there you I love you guys. Oh, if I can do it, why should we like bother the IFNG staff? You know, they're already tired. Oh, I can do it. I'm proactive. It's not that hard to copy and paste. <laughs> so you, you got the, the website there that's IELTS Online Tests. Guys, there's plenty of practice tests there. It's for free. Just register. This website is a partner of Niner. So plenty of practice tests. Go. Practice answering speaking questions. Don't practice one day before the test. You're not going to change a lot of things. If it's your test tomorrow, just rest. Don't stress yourself. Yeah, just rest. Trust what you have. Of course, expand your vocabulary helps. 
uh, watch English shows that also helps. Be confident with what you have. That's what I'm saying. One day before the test, you, you, you won't be able to change a lot. Just, just relax. Take it easy. And always remember, start strong, finish strong. Aim for a high score. If you aim for the sky, if you fail, you will reach the clouds. So thank you very much for attending this lecture on common mistakes in speaking. I hope that you learned a lot from me. Um, if you have questions, uh, feel free to type it in chat. Uh, but I believe that's it for me. I'm turning the spotlight over to, oh, I, uh, Sir Jeff's here. Sir Jeff, thank you so much, sir. I'm done. And I hope that everybody enjoyed this lecture. I'm on mute. Okay. Actually, the link that you're sending, uh, that you sent, sir, IELTS Online Test, that's what we are also using in IFNG. So if you wow. try to check on our page, the daily task, um, the link is IELTS Online Test. And it's there very you effective. So See, if you don't have any question, is there any question on Facebook as well? I think everyone is enlightened. No. Yeah. Well, if you have questions that maybe you were not able to ask tonight, feel free to, to reach out to me. You can find me on our Facebook page. Um, we have information with IFNG if you want to contact us. Maybe you can get in touch with Sir Jeff. If you yeah. want to talk to me, he will help you get in touch with me. Because yeah. I understand that some of you may not be able to come up with questions tonight. No, Sir Jeff, maybe you're tired. It's okay. If you remember something to ask, you know, just ask it at, at a later time. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Okay. So that's all for tonight. Um, thank you so much, Sir Loan. And I hope you had a great birthday and next year again. <laughs> yeah, thank you okay. so much, guys. So everyone, oh, bye, good night. Everyone. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Bye.